Well, thanks, Tucker. That's very generous. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Have a great night, great show and great story on that uh, childhood mask study. Covered that on my show today, too, folks. That's a huge story. These face diapers on your kids aren't doing any good. Tucker, that again. Welcome to Hannity. I'm Dan Bongino in tonight for Sean. Tonight we're tracking multiple breaking stories. The witch hunt against President Trump unfortunately continues. Prosecutors now are targeting the Trump Organization. This is Hunter Biden and his father, Joe, continue to get a free pass and are largely ignored and get away with whatever they want. Miranda Devine will be here with another shocking story involving Hunter's hard drive from Hades. Also tonight, a huge win in the Supreme Court for the integrity of our elections. Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich will be here with more on their big victory against the ballot harvesters at the DNC. But first, we're nearing the end of another long week for Joe Biden. And per usual, the president is, once again, malfunctioning in public. Check this out. All right. I left the list for the second one down there. Okay. Hang on. Thank you. Can you go? Thank you. Well, okay. Now, S. Res 15. Speaker Pelosi, Maxine Walters, and Chewy Garcia. Oh, <laughs> hey, Chewy, how are you, man? Senator, I hope. <laughs> I think I'm kidding, I'm not. Now, S. Res 13, disapproval of, of, of an Equal Opportunity Commission rule related to internal procedures. Speaker Pelosi, Bobby Scott, and, and, uh, and, oh, excuse me, Suzanne Bonamici. Did I get everybody? I'm so used to doing things with Bobby. He's, 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 getting, he's getting worried with your coat. <laughs> so, given Biden's struggles, who's in charge here at the White House? Is it Ron Klain, the chief of staff? Is it Susan Rice? It's probably not Kamala Harris. Her tenure as VP has been a debacle, a disaster. According to a new political report, 22 staffers are now speaking out about the dysfunction inside the vice president's office. Folks, it's only been six months. Six months, that's it. And they're already complaining, backstabbing, disorganization, toxic behavior. One Harris staffer called it a, quote, abusive environment. Another said it was an unhealthy workplace where people are treated like, you can fill in the blank there, folks. And it's not roses, by the way. And according to these whistleblowers, it all starts at the top. We're less than six months into this administration, and it's already not going well. And now President Trump appears poised to potentially make some major political waves. Check this out. Let me ask the crowd of everybody here, would you like to see the president run again in 2024? <laughs> Without giving the answer what the answer is, have you made up your mind? Yes. <laughs> I think you got it right. <laughs> yeah. If you move forward, you know how difficult it is. You seem ready to re-engage in, in that battle. And when it, you It's not that I want to. The country needs it. We we have to take care of this country. I don't want to. Is this fun? Fighting constantly, fighting always. I mean, uh, the country, what we've done is so important. Joining us now with reactions, Fox News contributor Mike Huckabee, along with Fox News contributor Laura Trump. Thanks a lot for joining us. We really appreciate it. Governor, I'll go to you first on this. You know, the recipe for disaster here for Democrats is inflation plus crime, right? I mean, Jimmy Carter got smoked by Ronald Reagan. We had stagflation. And then I think back to New York City, where Mayor David Dinkins, big Democrat, was celebrated by the media, ran into the high crime wall and got crushed by Rudy Giuliani. I mean, this is really bad right now for Joe Biden as liberal cities run amok and our economy falls into this inflation death trap. Who's in charge? Well, it's pretty apparent that Joe Biden's not in charge, but I do think that he was sucker punching uh, Maxine Waters when he was encouraging her to run for the Senate. She's 83 years old, and she'll never be defeated in her House district, but in a statewide election, it's a good way to send her home. So maybe he really is trying to say, run, Maxine, so that we can finally get rid of you. But I find it interesting that we know for sure, Dan, Kamala Harris is not in charge, and this Politico article is really just disturbing and showing that there's just complete disarray in her office. In fact, the infighting is so intense, 
I could have sworn that her office has become a Baptist church. It truly has taken on that form, without a doubt. So, Laura, we went through this litany of problems, a lot of it being uh, magnified in New York City, city you're very familiar with, places in total chaos. And we have a uh, prosecutor there, Cy Vance, who in his list of, you know, things he's concerned about, you think it would be crime, you know, terrorism, the struggling economy, people fleeing New York like Snake Plissken from the 80s movie. But no, no, they want to go after the CFO of the Trump Organization for free parking or something like that. Priorities, you know. Yeah, it is so outrageous to see this. You're exactly right. People that are committing real crimes are just being let go. Nothing is being done about it. Let me be, be very clear with people. What we saw happen to Alan Weisselberg today was absolutely disgraceful. Had this happened to anyone else, we are talking about five years of an investigation by Cy Vance, the district attorney. We are talking about three and a half million pages of documents because they're so desperate, Dan, to find anything on Donald Trump because they want to disqualify him from running for president in 2024. The best they could come up with was a corporate car for the CFO of the Trump Organization, yet they paraded him into criminal court in handcuffs in front of these horrible people in the media. It was a disgusting display Yet you're right, they're letting real criminals go. And by the way, what about Hunter Biden? We know this guy d absolutely broke the law numerous times. Yeah. Nothing is done about that. They go out of their way to try and disqualify Donald Trump. It is disgusting. And the message it sends to every single American is if this can happen to Donald Trump, think about what they could do to you. Disgraceful. Yeah, yeah, Hunter Biden's a protected class. You know, he's a Democrat. So, Governor, uh, you know, Kamala Harris, you ever see that meme on the Internet? You know, you had one job, like, you know, your job's to deliver the paper and you don't even get it on the stoop, you throw it down the drain. Kamala Harris had one job, the border. That was your one job, to go down there. She can't even get that right. I mean, all they had to do, Governor, was nothing. Just let the Trump policies continue and they would have been fine. And they managed to screw that up, too. Well, it's amazing. I have to wonder, maybe they wanted Kamala Harris in this job because she actually makes Joe Biden look competent. That may be the only thing. And, and to Laura's point, she is so 100 percent right. But I, I do have a strategy that I would suggest that everyone in the Trump orbit use. Anytime you're investigated, simply say, I identify as Hunter Biden. Because if you can do that, you'll never be investigated. Nobody will ever lay a finger on you. Nobody will care what you can do. You can do things in broad daylight. And the FBI and everybody will turn a blind eye and let it go. So just take the simple advice, identify as Hunter Biden. You're home free. You know, Governor, I, I watched the thing about wow, the old great, wrestler, great Roddy advice. Piper. And it was, right? And he had the, he said he used to write down his one-liners in advance. Do you just think of this stuff off the on the fly? Because you're a pretty funny cat there. That's, that's good well, stuff. Well, sadly, I, I do let this stuff fall out. And every now and then, some of it comes out that I wish hadn't. So that can be very dangerous. I like that. Just understand that it's risky business. Yeah, it's good stuff. Laura, I like that approach. Identify as Hunter Biden. It works very well. But on this border issue, seriously, they just had to do nothing. Just let your father-in-law's policies persist. This border chaos was completely avoidable. The numbers were clear as day. 30,000 illegal crossings uh, during the Trump years, 170,000 now. They, they just screwed it up by doing something. They could have just shut up and left it alone. <laughs> That's right. Everything the Democrats touch turns into a dumpster fire, basically. And you're seeing it on our southern border. It is so true. Do nothing, and the problem is already solved for you. But instead, they have to do the opposite of what Donald Trump wanted because everything he did was bad, right? Wrong. We had a country that was flourishing under President Donald Trump. We had a secure border. We had more jobs than we had people to fill them. The lowest unemployment in many respects in the history of America. We had energy independence, net energy exporter. We were respected around the world again in less than six months gone wiped off the map all of it is gone because they hate donald trump so much and sadly it's to the detriment of the american people governor you think this is going to manifest itself in the 2022 midterms uh, i mean really this has been a witch's brew 
for this uh, president so far. Again, between the inflation, the crime chaos in liberal cities, the terrible messaging, the grotesque performance at the border. You know, we don't have a great Senate cycle coming up. We've got a lot of competitive seats. I think we're going to do good in the House. But do you think it'll manifest itself on the Senate side and we have a chance of taking the Senate back? I, I think we have a shot at it. And the reason is because of what the Democrats are doing. I mean, they're basically sticking it up the nostrils of every American and saying, don't you like paying for higher gas prices? Don't you like the fact that there's a help wanted sign in every store and restaurant and hours have been curtailed because nobody is showing up to work thanks to the Biden policies? People are scared to death living in what has been major cities that were safe. They're not anymore. Uh, people care about their kitchen table issues, their personal economy. They care about their safety and security. And this administration and the Democrats with their nutty defund the police has uh, has put people in a real position of recognizing who the Democrats are. And, and for Jen Psaki to go to the White House and lie, just fly out, lie, like shag carpet in a VW hippie bus. I mean, my <laughs> gosh, go it was the Republicans trying to defund the police. And everybody with IQ above broccoli knows it wasn't the Republicans. It was the Democrats who continued to want to defund the police. Uh, I love your one-liners, Governor. You're great. Governor, Laura, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time tonight. Thanks a lot.